Welcome to the Practice You podcast. My name is Elena Brower. Together, we'll explore and enjoy content and conversations around mastering transitions. In our relations, our wellness, our careers, our families, and especially in our missions and visions. You are invited to learn and love and listen with me. Welcome to Practice You. Welcome back to the podcast. I have with me a new friend who has been a real force for both myself and for the mentorship portal that I have supported for the last year. Danny Pascarella is the founder and CEO of 111. This is a venture backed financial wellness platform. Stay with me. That empowers people to live happier lives through financial health. Get it. Prior to founding 111, Danny was an investment specialist at JP Morgan, where she managed money for ultra high net worth individuals with at least 25 million in investable assets. Wow. She became a licensed stockbroker at the age of 20. She's a personal finance contributor at Forbes. She is a certified financial planner, trademark, and she holds a BA and an MA in international business from the University of Florida and an MS in journalism from Columbia. Danny, needless to say, I am very psyched to have you here and welcome. Thank you so much, Elena. I'm so excited to be here and thank you for, for having me and, and giving me the opportunity to share my story. Yes. So financial health has been on my mind probably for the last 15 years. I've been actively engaged in making sure that I am financially healthy in the last 10. And it has yielded some really incredible results. My goal for my listeners sake, just to understand my goal was so that I could be philanthropic, making enough money to be philanthropic. And then I realized, oh, and I would like to be able to put a roof over my own head and not depend on somebody else. That also became a goal. Um, Many of my individual aims have been met through engaging in practices of financial health. You started kind of in a different direction. You were actually serving large corporations first after you finished with the high net worth individuals. And I want to hear where that started for 111, the name of your company, and how we are landing together, because I think it's a very interesting trajectory. Yeah, it, it absolutely has been interesting. And I, I, I think money stories are an interesting to, thing to talk about. And we all have them. Uh, my story actually begins, you know, far before I was ever on Wall Street. And uh, it began before I was born with uh, with my mother. Um, so while I was, you know, while I started my career working for the super wealthy and large corporations, my mom had the opposite situation. She was completely on her own at the age of 16 had to support herself financially from that age. And she was in New York City. So she was working retail jobs and, you know, department stores every single moment. She wasn't in school just so she could survive and, you know, keep that roof over her head. Wow. And statistically, you know, she shouldn't have gotten very far. I, I think we live in a world where, you know, it's, it's really easy to believe that socioeconomic status that you were born into determines your future and, and that we can't do a whole lot to change that. But um, you know, and that's easy to believe because statistically it, it kind of shakes out. But I had this mentor in my life, my mom, who was able to kind of show me the way. And if you flash forward, you know, a few decades, she actually was able to go through this complete transformation, this financial journey, if you will. And she did so well for herself. She was able to retire, you know, in her 50s very comfortably. And the reason she was able to do that is because she mastered her relationship with money. And she figured out how to to make it work for her. Um, so from there, um, because I had that that mentor, I was very interested. I, I realized very quickly that money was either a the most stressful, painful thing in people's lives, or b it could be this source of joy, of opportunity, of happiness. And I wanted to go to Wall Street to master this topic and learn how to 
you know, really help as many people master their relationships with money as possible. And, and my thinking was, let's start at the top and see how the, the wealthiest of the wealthy do it. And then, you know, from there, I went on this journey of everyone should have access to this. Why is this something that's just reserved for the, the ultra wealthy? Now, when you say your mom mastered her relationship to money, can you please elaborate? I think that my listener needs to understand what we're talking about and establish a sort of mutual agreement on the meaning of this. Yeah. So mastering the, your relationship with money, the way I think about it is, again, it comes back to that, that inflection point. Is it controlling you? Is it this constant source of stress in your life? Or is it something that's making your life better? Is it something that's making you happier? And I think for, for most of us, um, we haven't mastered our money, not because we're you know not smart or not capable. It's mainly because we've never had the opportunity to learn this stuff. Our education system doesn't teach you how to manage your own money in a way that benefits you where you're. And, and by that, to get more specific things like, you know, having an emergency fund for a rainy day. Be having enough extra to donate to those philanthropic causes, which is the mm. first thing we see our, our members do the moment they're financially stable. It's spending in a way that that is in line with your values so that every time you earn a dollar or spend a dollar, you feel like you're getting closer to the person that you want to be. Um, that's what mastering your money looks like, um, is, is having that money be this positive force in your life that again, creates opportunity and joy, not something that you're constantly stressed out about and that, that holds you back. The sentence that you just said about every dollar you spend or earn is bringing you closer to the person you want to be. That is profound. <laughs> profound. Oh, it's not what comes to my mind instantly are like those impulse purchases for things that aren't actually bringing me closer to whom it is that I want to be. So that's a really good uh, barometer. So you, you worked in, you know, high net worth individual land for how long? Oh, uh, about eight years um, from the beginning to the end. It's a long time. Tell me if you could sort of parse out one or two of the practices that those ultra high net worth individuals engaged in, in order to either reach where they ended up seeing you with 25 million plus, or uh, maintained that. Can you think of one or two of those practices? Oh, ab absolutely. There are, I think, several tips. The first one, I, I think, is is very in line with, uh, you know, many of, it's a point that you bring often, often, it's mentorship. It's having that mentor. I think when we look at things like wealth creation, I think the idea of building a lot of wealth, it's very, especially if you don't come from the kind of background that is wealthy, it's a hard thing to imagine and wrap your head around. And it's very easy to feel like, well, this is not for me. This is for other people. The thing that makes you feel like I can do this, this is in the realm of possibilities for me, is by surrounding yourself by people or even better, a mentor that you can meet with consistently that has done it before. Because seeing that success from somebody that you know or your community is really going to, that's the number one thing that's going to make you feel like, yes, I can achieve it too, because I see somebody that's similar to me that is doing it. And not only am I seeing them do it, they're giving me their advice on how. That's the the fast track to being able to do that. And I, when I meet with the super wealthy, the, one of the things that I notice is not only do they have one mentor, they have many. The mentorship mm -hmm. is so strong in their lives across all facets. It's money, it's mental health, it's emotional health, it's everything, it's business, it's everything that they do. So mentorship is, is the first one. I think a second thing is making it a daily practice. So if something is important to you, you need to make it a habit. Um, I, I think we see, I think within the physical and, and mental health spaces, you've seen an emotional health, you've seen a lot of that really gain popularity in, 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 the, in the past several years, making it this regular thing that you do on a, a frequent basis because it's important to you and you're prioritizing that. Uh, when we look at people who have really good financial habits, it seems so effortless to them. And it's because they invested the time to make it a habit. 
Um, I, I think about myself, you know, I, there was a time when I, I didn't really work out or I didn't, you know, I didn't meditate or I, I didn't have these certain habits that I have now. Um, and I think building up to making it a habit, now it feels effortless to me. It feels strange if a day goes by where I don't do it, but it's that gap in between of getting through making something a habit. That's where most people in the, when it comes to personal finance or really anything will drop off. They'll try, they'll do it for a couple of weeks and then it's hard and they'll, you know, they'll kind of recoil or give up. But if you push through that and it usually takes about, I'd say a little over two months if you look at statistics to create a habit, then now you have your financial situation very much on autopilot. It's something that feels really natural and even fun for you. Yeah. And I think what's most interesting is there was this one practice that I put into place those 10 years ago where I started just checking on my numbers every day. Yeah, that that's the ultimate habit is checking your numbers Daily to start is ideal. Um, eventually, when you get very good at it, I'd say once a week is the max that I would go without doing it. But that's the, the number one thing, checking your numbers or your budget. That's the first step in getting everything else in your financial life right. Yeah. I can really feel that right now. Um, if you're not controlling your money, it's probably controlling you, I always like to, to say. Well, let's pause right there for a moment. <laughs> oh, yes. When you started with 111, you started actually working in large corporations and you were advising the employees of those large corporations. Tell me how that morphed into what 111 has become. And I want my listener to understand exactly what 111 is because I think it's a genius opportunity for people to really dive in with help. Yeah. Uh, so 111 is a financial wellness program. And the way I think of it is it's everything that you need to be financially successful in one place. It's education. So it's, it's short videos about all of the money topics you should have learned in school, but probably didn't. It's mentorship. So every single member on our platform gets a certified financial planner like myself. So that's the gold standard in the financial planning world. If you're looking for a, you know, a human calculator, that's pretty much as, as close to that as you'll get. But you also get a wealth coach who is trained in psychology and goal setting. That's going to be with you every step of the way to hold you accountable. Members also get financial plans uh, on demand whenever they want. So we're essentially taking all of their numbers taking all of their goals and creating a roadmap for the future. So here's where you are now, here's where we're gonna go. And then that wealth coach is working with you to break down that plan into small achievable micro goals. So every paycheck, or if you're, you know, if you own your own business, every time you pay yourself, we're making progress. And again, it all comes back to that, that theme of being the person you wanna be. And every dollar is a vote for the future you and let's get you there. So. It's the plan and then it's also the accountability and the progress tracking. So it's everything bundled into, you know, one platform and soon to be mobile app within the next few few days, actually. Um, so that's the experience. And we actually started partnering with employers and, and now universities as well because they recognize that there is a really big need for this. You know, stress is very, very interesting. Uh, interestingly enough, it's the it's a wellness issue. It is the biggest wellness issue that companies have when they look at their people and they think, why are they not happy here in their roles? Or why are they not performing as well as they could? Or why are they quitting? A lot of times money is the answer. Uh, so what we did is we partnered with leading employers who are really progressive and forward thinking to come in as an employee benefit. So top employers are, are now saying, hey, we're not just going to give you a paycheck. We are going to show you how to optimize your happiness with it. And I think this is going to become the gold standard or, or the norm um, in, in employee benefits within the next decade. But right now we're seeing like the, the best of the best companies are starting to do it. Such a genius idea. Think about it. You know, you're helping your people be financially healthy. They're much more likely to stick around. Yeah. Absolutely. And it, it's also a healthcare issue. So really interesting is that I, I think a lot of people see finances as, as very different than wellness. And it's actually so closely tied. So money is the number one cause of stress. So um, studies show that workers say money matters are 54% say that money is their leading cause of stress. 
that's more than their job at 18%. That's more than relationships at 12%. And that's more than health concerns at 11%. And if you take it back to a, like a doctor visit level, which is, I think, the baseline way to think about uh, health, 70 to 90% of doctor's visits are actually stress-related. So if you eliminate the number one cause of stress in people's lives, or at least reduce it, which usually is money, now you're seeing things like lower healthcare costs, which are actually a massive cost for, for companies that are, that are self-insured. So smart. My gosh. And so now 111 has morphed into what is essentially a financial wellness program for individuals. You've mentioned a little bit about the program. Each person gets their own mentor. There's, I think, what is the most brilliant aspect is the accountability aspect. My dear collaborator, Michelle, and I, early on, were sort of goading each other to save money, to invest money. And we were both scared and we both did it. And, you know, with very little actual mentorship until quite recently, we we sort of helped each other along. And I'm interested to hear if, let's say my listener right now were to sign up for 111, what's the first thing that happens? Yeah. So the first thing that happens when, when if you're one of your listeners, or listeners were to sign up would be that they would have a kickoff call and they're going to be, they're basically going to get into our platform. They're going to get a message right through in-app chat from their, you know, their friendly wealth coach. And the first thing that they're going to do is they're going to talk about goals. So the whole point of this finance stuff, I think it's very easy to get lost in like budget and 401k, but none of this has any points unless it's helping you get to where you want to go. That's why we do this. So step one is I, I call it the financial genie question. So if I could wave a wand and your life is magically you know, different in some ways, what does that look like? What are the changes that are happening? And then we'll see what, um, you know, what our, our new member says. And that to us is the best starting point. And it can be anything from, you know, I want to feel less stressed. I want to feel confident about the decisions I'm making. I want to be more philanthropic. It can be a number of, of things. But step one in your financial journey, any journey, but financial especially, is defining your goals and really outlining what you what you want to see and, and finding your why. You know, why are you doing this? Yeah. Very beautiful. Um, and then what do you find are the biggest sort of resistance points to people who have signed up for 111 and are feeling uh, somehow stuck? Like, how do, how do you work through that? And what are those resistances that people normally feel if you are experiencing that? That's a great question. Uh, the biggest point of resistance, I, I think we see finance is very similar to, you know, the nutrition and dieting industry. I think there are so many parallels. And when we get new members, usually they've tried before. They may have tried to budget on their own. They may have tried in, you know, an app or taken a course or read a book. There are some points and usually many points within their life where they've tried to get a handle on this. Because at the end of the day, money is something that we all have to deal with, but they feel like they failed in some way. They feel like I've tried all the stuff. It didn't work for me. Why is this going to be any different? So it's very common for us to see that, that resistance or that hesitation. Right. And a lot of times our, our new members have made up their mind that I'm not good at this. I'm not good at money. Our answer to that is we've got to completely change that narrative because the reality is, and, and actually the story hits at home. I was talking to now a longtime uh, a member of our community, but when she first started, she was a graduate from a top three MBA program. You know, that's hard hitting business all day. And she came to me and she said, you know, Danny, I just graduated from one of the top business schools in the world. If you give me any company's financial statement, I can go through them like nobody's business. But when it comes to myself and my situation, I feel this deep sense of shame because I feel like I should know more. I should be further along. I, I feel like I'm not where I should be. And I feel like I've tried this on my own and I'm scared to try again because it's embarrassing for me because I feel like I, again, should be further along. And I think that's very representative of, of how most people feel. And it's not anyone's fault. So if you're sitting there thinking, I'm not good at this, it's not that you're not good at this. It's 
you haven't had the opportunity to learn this or the tools and support system that are necessary for you to be successful with this. Because the reality is most schools don't teach this stuff. So unless you happen to grow up in, in a home where this was taught, which is almost none of us, um, you can't expect yourself to be to just magically be good at it. And that's where we come in. Right. Well, I'm super happy to see that this is actually on the horizon. This is happening in real time. Is there anything that you would like to add to what we've shared with our listener that would help them in any way understand why this is so vitally important to become financially, not just healthy, but well? Absolutely. I, I think that a number of reasons why it's important, but I think if you take a step back and you look at your life and, and the broader context of it, there are many things and hopes and dreams and things that we aspire to do. And the thing that determines whether or not you get to do them more often than not, it actually is money and financial management. Sometimes it's time, but again, money can help with time. So if you're looking to, again, it's a choice you have to make. This is going to impact your life in a profound way. It does for all of us. And the earlier you make the decision, money is going to be the source of power for me, the source of being able to choose my own, you know, my own future and using it as this toolkit to, to help facilitate happiness. That's when life starts to get even more fun, even more, um, you know, and you're enjoying your life even more. Whereas if you neglect it or you don't get a handle on it, I think it, it doesn't get easier if you wait. And then it's going to become your your biggest stressor, that big pain point in your life. So yeah. what I urge you to think about is you have to make the choice at some point. And again, the earlier you decide to, to conquer this, uh, this concept of financial wellness, the easier the rest of your life is going to be. Yeah, I second that. Well, Danny, it's such a pleasure to talk to you. I think that this conversation is not being had often enough where, and I want to go back to the very beginning for to sort of close us out where you said everybody's got a money story. And it dawned on me that we don't ever talk about this. I've mentioned mine in the past, but I had this interesting repeated experience of watching the back of my mom's head sitting at the dining room table. And you could feel her frustration there when things weren't balancing. They, my parents owned businesses. And it was always just kind of a sticky, icky um, topic. And so as an adult, as a young adult in my 20s, when I finally unraveled all of this, I was 40. But as a young adult in my 20s, I realized now that anytime money would come to me, Danny, there was no saving, there was spending, mm -hmm. because I didn't want it anywhere near me. Because of what I'd watched my mom go through, she was just always frustrated about it. And I feel like for people hearing us who haven't had this conversation yet, if you're listening and you have a money story that has created within you an aversion to money or the belief that money is evil, bad, problematic, I would encourage you to sort of write all of that down. Why do you feel that way? What were the sources of this um, sensation? and then start to pull apart how those narratives play a role in your experience of money today. Is that part of what you do? Because I feel like that's been a huge help to me. Absolutely. And that, that's, one of, that's one of the most fantastic exercises you can do is just understanding your money story. And it's your earliest belief. Earliest memories are the, the best place to start because our, our narratives, our personal narratives are, are shaped so, so early. So I, I think that's great. And you also hit on a very popular reason why people tend to spend, which is this belief that money is an evil thing, which is a limiting belief, um, but it, it's one that's very, very widespread. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm fascinated and honored to have you here, thrilled to have you on the team and excited for um, my listener to explore what you've got here. Um, I just also wanted to point out to our listener for today that for anyone who is listening, you are going to get 20% off 
of your 111 Financial Wellness Membership. You will receive a personalized financial plan. You will receive the short video lessons that I love and have shared with my friends, particularly the one about building your credit. Amazing. I love that one. Daily budgeting tools, a dedicated wealth coach, as Danny mentioned before, a mentor to hold you accountable. To redeem this, you are going to go to, you're going to spell out these words, 111, so it's O-N-E-E-L-E-V-E-N dot C-O. So it's not dot com, it's dot C-O, 111 dot C-O, and use the promo code, all caps, practice you, all caps. Danny, the last thing I want to leave our listener with is the building credit part. I think it's an important conversation. Talk to us about, and there are a few factors, and I know that I'm practicing one of them right now. Talk to us about the the ways in which to build your credit. Credit is a, I like to call it the secret tool of the, the wealthy, because any time in your life you're making a very big purchase, like buying a home, for example, you're doing it with credit. And the better your credit score, the better interest rate that you're going to get. Uh, that translates to tens of thousands of dollars in savings just for having a good score. Uh, so some of the things you can do really quickly now to ensure that you have good credit. Um, one is just never make a late payment. Set all of your accounts to auto pay for at least the minimum. Uh, that way you never run that risk. A late payment can stay on your credit report for up to seven years, and that will have a, a pretty tough impact on your score. Uh, the other thing is just you keep your utilization rate on your credit cards relatively low. So anytime you're using more than 30% of the credit available to you, it's going to start to make your score get lower. Uh, so those are two, those are two of the biggest drivers. There are several others, but those are the two that we, you know, we frequently see making people's scores a bit lower than they, they could be and have the potential to be. And my humble layman's way to boost my credit is that whenever I make a purchase that's more than a, you know a couple of hundred dollars I will go ahead and pay that credit card off for that amount that day or the next day so smart I love that and that I see I watch in real time as my credit goes up the following week from paying before the bill is due yeah yeah. That's excellent. And that's a good way to make sure you're not overspending too. And I, I think it, it sounds like you're doing that, uh, that daily check-in on your budget, Elena. You know, I'm that dork. I am that dork and I do it. And some months are better than others, but I do do it because I feel like I'm done putting my head in the sand as I did throughout my 30s. You know, that, that's such an important point, though, to remember that success is not linear. I, I think that's one of the biggest things that you can remember go, when you're at any stage in your financial journey, really, is that not every week, month or even year is going to be perfect. Yeah. But what is important is that you keep moving in the right direction. Yeah. And I think just the awareness is 80 percent of this financial health uh, conversation is just being aware of what's there. That's exactly right. Yeah. Thank you, Danny Pascarella. Thank you, my lady, for coming on the show. We are all thankful. And I look forward to doing more with you in the future, Danny. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And likewise. <laughs>